Welcome to another season of Raiders Press Conference Live presented by Intermountain Healthcare. I'm your host, Vince Sapienza, alongside the Raiders living legend, Eric <laughs> Allen. EA, it is week one of the yep. NFL season. Tough Monday for Raider Nation waking up oh, today. For sure. Losing on the road week one to the LA Chargers, 24 to 19. But as they say, this is a marathon, not a sprint. What should the feeling be? this Monday after week one. Oh, we're all disappointed, mm -hmm. obviously. You know, we want to win the football game, want to start off 1-0. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen. I thought the Chargers had a really good game plan, uh, did an outstanding job of coverage in the back end. I thought their defensive backs played extremely well. Of course, Herbert making incredible throws, just letting everyone know why he's one of the top young quarterbacks in the league. But on our end, I thought run defense was a positive. I thought, of course, Devontae Adams, man, having an outstanding number one receiver, him in D.C. You saw the communication there. You saw the hookups there. Uh, would like to see the running game a little bit better. But again, I think this was a spotlight game for Carr and Devontae Adams, obviously. Ten catches over 100 yards, got a touchdown. Just letting everybody know he's yeah. still the number one guy in the National Football League. And yeah, I know this team, this organization is not good enough with just being good enough or right. close or things like that. But when you look at the silver lining, and that's what we're going to do here today, you give up six acts, you lose the turnover battle, yet yeah. you're still just one score away. A lot of good was done. Specifically, we were all waiting on the hype, right? Yeah. Derek Carr, Devontae yeah. Adams. Did you know they were college teammates, by the way? Were they? They were. Okay. Newsflash. But they looked, they looked really good. Yeah. It seems like this is just an offense that's waiting to fully – click as we move into the season oh without a doubt and again at some points in the game it kind of reminded me of old school uh week three preseason right when all the starters had their opportunity to play and was trying to get that timing right so it just seemed to me like a lot of things were kind of rushed a little bit and he talked dc talked about it uh last night talked about man being so just kind of pushing a gas pedal, yeah. being so aggressive, making sure that he was trying to get all of his guys involved and not allowing the game to come to him. Mm -hmm. Man, you know what? It's just week one, right? Didn't work for us. We're going to be back in the saddle very soon at those Cardinals. Hard not to be fired up for week one, but yeah. we move on, and we have plenty to unpack from week one. Coming up after the break, it is Raiders Press Conference Live. We will hear from the head coach, Josh McDaniels, as we look ahead to week two. Keep it here. 60 years in the making, the Raiders now have a permanent place to call home, and the doors are open to get a world-class behind-the-scenes tour of their new home. An attraction unlike any other in Las Vegas, Allegiant Stadium. The Las Vegas Raiders invite you to experience the expertly guided tour that includes exclusive access to areas restricted to only football players, coaches, and staff. For more information, visit AllegiantStadium.com forward slash tours. We both from the Bay Area. Now, we both play for the Green Bay Packers. When I came to the Oakland Raiders, the first time I put on that uniform, I was like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. It just was a different feel. You yeah. haven't had a chance to play a real game yet, but you had a chance to get out there, put your uniform on for a preseason game. What, 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 what did it feel like the first time you put that uniform on well, compared to a Packers uniform? Because it's a different feel. It's a different feel, man. <laughs> it's a different feel. And you know me, I, I stay in the black anyway. Yeah. So that, it kind of just feel like, feel natural to yeah. me, man. And and like like we talked about, you know, I've talked about what everybody at this point is. I, I grew up a Raiders fan, so I've been wearing the, the colors growing up and um, never never got a chance to put that jersey and the, and the pads on, though. So to, to have that on, it was a special feeling. Walk around the locker room, people looking at me, they're like, man, you look good in that, in that black and silver, man. So it's a good feeling, and, and I'm, I'm just trying to go out there and make some plays in it now. Well, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you sitting down with your boy, man. Yes, go get sir. it this year, brother. Got you. Go get it. Yeah. Raiders Press Conference Live is brought to you by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. Well, welcome back to Raiders Press Conference Live. Vince Sapiens alongside Eric Allen and EA for the first time since 2018. The Raiders start the season 0-1. Josh McDaniels unable to get that first victory as head coach for the Silver and Black. But what was your takeaway 
from his performance as well as the team and how he was able to handle? Well, I think, first of all, I think we all kind of were waiting for that moment where he kind of Josh can put his fingerprints on the football game. And I thought that happened after halftime. I think the halftime adjustments coming out were fantastic. I thought offensively and defensively, you see the subtle changes formationally with the offense and defensively kind of making sure that run didn't get going. So I think right now what we want to see is continue with that adjustments, those opportunities, dealing with situational football. We've heard that all preseason, right? Situational football, how important it is. But it's the one thing in the preseason, obviously, during the real games, mm -hmm. you have to have those adjustments, and they work. So now the team understands, like, man, we made a little tweak here, made a little tweak there, and we're rolling, right? That's very important for our players to understand just how – competent Josh is when he has opportunities to make those adjustments at halftime. All right, Josh McDaniels, we're going to look for that first win next week. But right now we're going to hear from the Raiders head coach as he gets set to meet with the media following week one. Take a listen. We hard at work at, at that today and try to improve um, from this and, and be a better football team going forward. <laughs> Josh, after the game, Derek mentioned about being aggressive as possibility for the interceptions. I'm just curious, some of those balls were thrown underthrown or thrown behind guys. Is that more timing than aggression? Um, there's a lot of, I mean, you know, there's a lot that goes into passing the ball, obviously, and, um, you know, reading the coverage, making a decision on where you want to go with the ball. Um, and then, obviously, the, the actual mechanics of throwing it, you know, the way you want to throw it. Um, any number of those things could deter us from having success. So, um, you know, the deep one to, to Tay was a little underthrown on that one. Um, you know, we had, you know, um, same thing one down the, down the middle to Waller. Again, that was more of a decision of how to throw it than, you know, than underthrown. It was kind of we put more zip on that one as opposed to touch. And, um, you know, and those are decisions that happen in a football game. So, um but, you know, like I said, we're going we're gonna to learn a lot from this because uh, we had some, um, you know, there, there's, there's hidden opportunities within possessions offensively, defensively to create a different situation. And what I mean by that is, you know, you have a second and three play and you might have uh, executed that play a little bit better and maybe it was first and ten because you gain eight or 12 or 15 yards instead of third and three, you know? And so I think there's a lot of those that happened yesterday where, you know, we ended up in a situation, but it could have been prevented had we had more success earlier or on defense, you know, done a better job of stopping them certain, certain situations. So, um, you know, there, there's a lot that goes into that, um, but, We'll try to fix all of it, certainly. And uh, there's nothing more important than us taking care of the ball. There's no question about that. It's hard to win when we do that. How much of that was lack of, uh, you know, in-game reps, something you talked about in the preseason that yeah. you, can't, you can't simulate that in practice? Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, I don't know if we would have simulated that a ton anyway. Again, I'm not going to look back on it and regret anything. I, like I said, I think we were a healthy football team going into yesterday. I was, you know, happy about that. And... There were definitely uh, players that didn't play in the preseason. Um, but I also thought we had a lot of guys that didn't play in the preseason that played well yesterday. So, you know what I mean? And, and there was a few plays, like I said, here or there, that you say, man, if we would have changed the outcome of that. But that's football. That happens every week, you know. So, unfortunately, we were on the short end of those yesterday. And, um, you know, we're going to take the right attitude and approach here and try to fix those things and be better for it. You kind of just saying the right attitude and approach moving forward. Even though it is a loss, how optimistic can you be that you, know, you were down driving, you could have won that game and really yeah. almost beat yourselves, essentially? Yeah. I'm, you know, I mean, I'm not a big – you're never going to hear me talk about moral victories or anything like that because I don't believe in that. Um, you know, but I, I like the competitive spirit of our team. Um, I like the character that we displayed yesterday. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's football. You know, you fall behind, you, play, you keep playing, you know, and – uh, our job is to keep catch up, you know, play better, coach better, and uh, and catch up. And uh, we had a chance to do that. Uh, and for that, like I said, I respect the way we played and competed. Um, you know, and, but you know, that's that's every week. 
you know, we're going to play another good team this week, you know. And so if we do the right things, we'll have a chance, you know. And if we don't and we put ourselves in a hole, then it'll be hard, you know. So, um, you know, learning how to win is not something you get to carry over from one year to the next, not as a coach and not as a team. So, um, you know, that's something that you acquire through work and trust and repetition and habits. And uh, I, I really believe that. And so uh, we're going to work hard at it again this week. Josh, after breaking down the tape and seeing the way the offensive line played, were there, you know, the combinations that you liked? Just kind of how would you assess the play from that group overall after seeing it? I think they all played competitively. Um, I really do. Um, you know, and like I said, we're not we're not searching for anything. We're playing the guys that deserve to play. Um, you know, there's seven guys that played yesterday because they earned the opportunity with their performance throughout the course of the preseason. Um, and in training camp, and they, they've done it through thousands of reps, you know. And so um, if something were to, to break and say, hey, you know, these five are clearly, you know, different from the other five, then, you know, we, we could go in that direction. But I thought the two young players, you know, uh, acquitted themselves decent. Um, there's going to be things that we're going to correct today across the board, all five guys, all seven guys that played. Um, I also think there was – you know, they did a they did a lot of good things in the game that gave us opportunities to make plays both in the running game and the passing game. Um, you know, we we can we can blitz pick up better. Uh, you know, we had a couple issues with our backs. You know, just in terms of overall protection, um, we had a couple things where we were trying to, you know, help the protection and didn't didn't do it necessarily the way that we wanted to do it. And, and then we had a couple of issues where, you know, we probably could have got the ball out a little quicker based on something that was available to us. So I've always believed that protection is a team thing. It's not just on the offensive line. Um, you know, I've coached in a lot of games where we've thrown it 50 times and never been touched. And the reason we didn't get touched is because we, you know, the, the whole design of the play was to get it out fast. You know what I mean? And so maybe the offensive line got a ton of credit that day, but I'm not really sure that it was just on them. You know what I mean? So it's a function of everybody doing their job. It really is. It won't ever be any different, you know. So they got to do their job, but so do the skill guys, so do the backs and blitz pickups, so do the tight ends. So, um, but I thought those guys competed hard. I thought they gave us an opportunity to win, um, you know. And, and again, we're going to fix a lot of things today and correct them. So hopefully we'll be better for it. But you uh, went into the game uh, with a clean injury sheet, and then seven guys left the game. Any updates on? Yeah, the, uh, I saw Andre get we, loaded into Yeah, game. Andre's back here now, so which is a good thing. Um, I know, I know, you know that was kind of just a little bit of a concern at, at last night. So we did the right thing there, but he's here. Uh, came back last night. I haven't met with Chris yet. Um, you know, we obviously came out of it. You know, with some bumps and bruises for sure. I'm uh, not exactly sure the extent yet on those. Uh, the guys haven't all trickled in yet, so um, we'll find out more today. But it was a physical game, that was for sure. Um, I thought they played real hard and physical. I thought we tried to do the same thing. So both guys had, both teams had some people that left the game, no question about it. But, um, you know, I, I think that speaks to opening day and being ready to go, the depth of the team, you know, and. You know, Luke Masterson's in there playing linebacker on opening day. I'm not sure he really imagined he would be doing that, you know. And But, you know, that's that's the nature of football. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see more today as they come in. Nick, through your year, uh, Josh, through your years, do you see that biggest improvement or correction or adjustments made from week one to week two going into a, a second week? I'd love to be able to say that I could guarantee that. Um, but I'd. You know, that wouldn't be an accurate statement, I don't think. I, I, I don't think it's fair to put that kind of a, a burden on one person or one unit to say, hey, th you know, this is our only chance to really take a big step. I think it, it happens organically, you know, when, when, when we see it clearly, we understand what it is we all need to do a little bit better, um, and then we make those necessary adjustments during the week of practice and then play that way to get the results we're talking about, you know. Um, sometimes just saying, if you do this, this will happen, isn't enough. Um, you know, you have to work at it in practice. You have to get some results on the practice field first. Um, you know, and there's certain things that we're doing well, you know, and then there's other things we're not. So um, I think you've got to coach those things as hard as you can this week, get them to trust it, believe in it, and then go out and do it in a game. And then when you get the results in a game, then it kind of starts to sink in like, yeah, this is, this is a good formula for us. So. 
Um, there are certain things we, we understand, and I think now we'll, we'll see another opportunity here today to, to fix some of those things and make ourselves better. Josh, it was only one game of a 17 game, so the sample size is small, but holistically over the Josh McDaniels offense, mm -hmm. do you need Derek to occasionally run like Tom did simply to keep defenses on? Meaning run up uh, with the ball? Yeah, just to take off. <laughs> I would like that not to happen a whole lot. I'm not a big fan of our quarterbacks doing that necessarily. But if it presented itself and the situation was right, of course the guys are going to do that. Um, you know, and Derek's done that over his career. And, um, you know, I don't think we didn't have a whole lot of rushing yesterday between the two quarterbacks. But, um, you know, I, I think if it's necessary and you, and you need it, yes. Um, preferably, uh, I'd like to keep that little cocoon, you know, in a, in a nice spot and let him throw the ball from the from the from the pocket. So um, hopefully we can do that a little better. Saturday before you guys left out, of course you locked up Darren Waller for the extension. How relieving was it to yeah. get that done? And what did you like from him on Sunday? What did you see that you liked? Yeah, um, happy for Darren and happy for the Raiders. Um, you know, obviously he's he's been a really good player here um, and a very productive player. Um, you know. Uh, I know that Dave and, and you know, uh, Darren's representatives had been working on that hard uh, for a while. And so uh, really, you know, happy for him. Um, you know, made some big plays again. You know, had some other opportunities. We had just, just missed a little bit. But, um, you know, Darren competes hard, practices hard, plays hard, um, and certainly can, can be a big factor in a game. So, um, you know, I got to try to do a better job maybe getting them, you know, even more opportunities. But... Um, no, happy about that whole situation and, and looking forward to continuing to work with him going forward. We'll do two more Q and then Honda. Coach, you mentioned, uh, you know, sometimes that the offensive line or the protection is about getting the ball out quickly as well. But when you have playmakers like Devontae, Darren, and Hunter, what's that fine line of trying to get the ball quickly but then also holding the ball a little yeah. bit longer to let that play develop? Yeah, I think there's, there's really, a, you know, um, kind of a, an art in terms of, like, trying to figure out, you know, at what point do you go ahead and, and do that? Not only the quarterback, but also maybe the way you call the game, you know? Um, you know, there's a feeling during the drive, the rush is fresh, maybe we don't do that as much, you know? The rush is a little tired, maybe we do it more, you know? Um, and then the quarterback, obviously, he's out there. Nobody knows and understands the rush uh, and – and the way the coverage is being played more than he does because he's on the field. And so I have a great deal of respect and appreciation for the quarterbacks in general because, you know, you and I can sit here and say, hey, do this or do that. But at the end of the day, they got the ball, you know, and they're feeling everything. You know, they see the rush. They see the disguise. You know, they see the blitzers. You know, they, they see the coverage. You know, they understand a lot, a lot of the little things that are happening on the field. So, um, you know, would I love to say that we are going to play a perfect game in terms of timing and, hey, we're going to get it out quick and then, you know, at the perfect moment we're going to hold it and the rush is going to die down and then we're going to throw it for a chunk and then we're going to go back to throwing it quick again. That would be great, you know what I mean? And every time I call a screen, they're going to be 15 yards up the field. I mean, that would be perfect, but it's not realistic, you know. So some of the things that, you know, that you have to do, I think, in the passing game. And this takes just games and reps and, and feeling and understanding um, is when to say the play is done. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I want it to work. And it, ugh, that first read didn't win there, second read wasn't there. You know what? Maybe the situation in the game is such that I just throw the ball away and take an incomplete pass. You know, that happens. You know, it's the same thing with a runner. You know, you want to make every run can't be a touchdown. You know what I mean? I thought there were times yesterday where, where we tried for extra yards and there was times we put our head down and got a couple extra and that was it. You know, so uh, making those split second decisions is important and understanding when to do it, when not to do it. But it's not an exact science. That's for sure. I agree there aren't moral victories, but there was a lot of good by your team yesterday to be encouraged about. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious after watching the film, is there maybe some things you saw that, that you were very encouraged about? Uh, you know, I, I, for, I'd start with our effort and, and, and competitiveness. Again, uh, like I said, I mean, that's a good football team, you know. Um, you know, and they got a lot of good players. We know that. They're very well coached. And, you know, uh, this team, you know, last year had been in two close games with them before. And so, you know, we, we, we felt like it would be a, a, a situation where we're probably going to come down to the fourth quarter. We talked about that a lot last week. And uh, that's the kind of game it was. 
Um, I thought we did a decent job of containing a few of their, you know, really big, you know, big play players. You know, Williams, we, we, we tried to do a good job of limiting his overall production. And I know Allen went out of the game, and he, he had a few big ones before he went out of the game. Uh, and then we tried to tackle Eckler as best we could. He's really a good player. But um, thought we did that, you know, decent. Uh, we, we didn't run it enough because of the score and the way the, the game kind of ended up going. But I thought when we did, we, you know, there was some production there. Um, you know, so it, this, you know, a lot to be learned, um, more, more to be had in every phase, no question about it. I thought we had a chance at a punt. You know, pump block. You know, just missed it. You know, but I mean, those are those are things that happen. You know, and this game is not a game of what ifs. You know, it's a game of what happened, and so uh, we're going to learn from those things today. Thanks, coach. Thank you, everyone. Good to go. Okay, you got it, guys. That was Raiders head coach Josh McDaniels following the Raiders week one loss on the road 24-19 to the L.A. Chargers. Vince Sapiens alongside Eric Allen inside the Raiders studios. And it can feel like the sky is always falling after a loss. But there is plenty more season ahead. Coming up after the break, Devontae Adams. He had a big day. We'll talk about it. You got your contract. You got it. You know, agents tell you this. Coaches tell you this. You're playing to get to that second deal. Like, no, I don't care about all that like that's amazing of course I want that but like it's so much bigger for me like I, I, I care about my legacy more than anything on this planet and what I give back to people a month under the Las Vegas Sun there's so many things we have to do between now and when we're going to play once you start training camp it's a uh, you got to be in a different place mentally we got to show up and, and do the groundwork we got to do the footwork every single day we're at a place where we can you know play competitive football but again I still think that there's always room in certain areas to definitely improve for the chance to make their mark on history. Daniels is putting the pieces together. You got to have a pass rush. Max Crosby is all pro quality, and now you're just putting a potential Hall of Famer and Chandler Jones on the other side with him. Raiders are absolutely on fire. The nation should be out of their skull. Blood, sweat, tears. With the preseason in the rear view, the silver and black emerge as a force to be reckoned with. Familiar and fresh faces on the field. Competition, camaraderie, brotherhood. Working toward a single goal, to fight, to win, to hear the echoes of Raider Nation. Understanding that it's not just about what's in front of them, but their legacy on the gridiron. Raider Nation, introducing your 2022 Las Vegas Raiders. Conference live. Vince Sapiens alongside Eric Allen EA. We just heard from head coach Josh McDaniels following that week one loss. What's your yeah. biggest takeaway in terms of what you heard? Again, a I know a lot of good stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of good stuff there. But uh, number one is execution. Mm -hmm. I think when you talk about what happened yesterday, it was all about execution, line protection. It's just not the line, those sacks. Other things have to happen to go well with execution. And that's the one common theme to continue to go up. And of course, this is a results based game. The results weren't like we want them to, but he's going to respond the proper way. But overall, it's all about execution. You got to execute to win in this game. One person we don't have to worry about executing, Devontae Adams. 
That's he right. executed at an extremely high level yesterday, getting it done. Ten catches, over 100 yards, and a touchdown. Man, he was getting it done. Raider Nation is going to love to see that. We'll probably see plenty more this season. It is a process, not a finished product. Coming up after the break, we are going to take a deep dive into week two opponent, Arizona Cardinals, the Raiders home opener. Keep it here.